price description everything so i would like to make an appointment with this property email phone okay yes wow this is this is amazing so fast hello this is alex from Ramaz. um i am calling because I oh wow we're interested in condo in lago di como italy is this melina yes yes it's melina speaking I'm just checking your web right now. <laughs> this is awesome. Ah, great to hear from you, Melina. I'm glad you're checking out our website. So I wanted to ask if you're interested in placing a purchase offer for that yes. condo in London. Yes, I would like to make an offer. Perfect. Just to clarify, the condo costs 210000 Are you interested in moving forward with that? Okay, yes, this, this price is fair to me. I want to pay in cash, that, that is possible. Since you're looking to pay in cash, we can assist you in booking a house view. I would like to know I more about the, the requirements for, for this property for a possible purchase. Um, for the purchase of the condo, since you're planning to pay in cash, you'll need to ensure you have the funds readily available. Um, additionally, there may be some documentation required, such as um, identification and proof of funds. Would you like more details on anything specific? Can I make an appointment this, this week? Right Absolutely. viewing on Monday, please. Perfect. Would you like to schedule the viewing for Monday at 4.30 p.m.? Perfect. Sounds great to me. We developed a solution for one of our real estate clients, um, and he agreed to be a study case. So let's dig deeper and see how this improved its business. He has a real estate platform where about 1,000 leads are filling in a form monthly. So, so they are booking a meeting for each of the form submissions. They are not pre-qualifying those leads because it would take a lot of time. So then they are just just creating a meeting with one of the realtors for each of the form submissions. So with a very high no-show rate, the realtors waste a lot of time preparing for those meetings. Only 30% of them actually happen. The conversion rate was around 10%, so they have three sales. To wrap this up, they have a revenue of 150k. The cost of the realtors doing the meetings, it will be about 15k. So this would be the profit. But let's see how with our AI agents, this changed completely. With the same 1000 leads, we were pre-qualifying them. This qualifier agent was calling them about five minutes after they filled the form asking some questions and assessing if they, that lead is a potential customer or not. Also creating this second touch point improves the purchase intention of a customer. With a filter of 40%, only 600 meetings were actually booked. But here we also have another agent that called them 30 minutes before the meetings and that reduced the no-show rate a lot, just to 20%. So with a 20% no-show rate, even though they only booked 600 meetings, the show rate was very high and this concluded in 480 actual meetings. Realtors didn't wait so much time in no shows. The conversion rate was still the same, and this was a revenue of 240k. Realtors had more meetings to attend, so it went to 24k. The agent monthly cost of the AI cost around 2k, so the profit 240k. That's an improvement of a 60%, that's a lot. So let's dig even deeper and see a simplified way to build something similar to this. Here is how the website looks. So when a customer select the time frame to book a meeting, we also ask them for their phone. But before they submit the form, we're actually doing another pre-qualifier layer here, asking a requisite for this property that is being an Italian citizen. And this will give us an error because first, to make outbound calls, we have to go to Twilio and select the country, the number of the country of the, that we want to call. Japan, US, Canada, France, and Germany are the only low risks destinations. So the rest of the countries, you have to go manually to, to this link that I will leave in the description. Uh, just select the country that you want to call and save. So let's select, yes, here. Perfect. So now that we have our country whitelisted, let's try again. And here we are sending all the information of the property that we show interested. 
the property, the assistant ID that we want to reach. Hello, this is Alex from Remaz. I'm calling because I saw you were interested in a condo in Lago di Como, Italy. Is this Thomas Gold? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly me. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I appreciate you asking. Um, so, I wanted to check in with you regarding the condo in Lago di Como. Um, are you interested in placing a purchase offer? Yes, yes I am. That's great to hear. Do you have any doubts regarding the... Uh, yeah, what's the price? Can you remember? The condo costs 210000 Are you interested in moving forward with that? Uh, yeah, 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 of course. So, um, perfect. Just to confirm, will you be paying in cash? Uh, yes, yes, I can pay in cash. No, you, you know, no, 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 I actually, I won't, I won't, I, I, won't, pay, I won't pay in cash. I want to ahead. pay with credit card. I understand. Um, unfortunately, the condo requires cash payment. Would you be interested in an affordable apartment in Milan instead? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, little guy. That's all. I appreciate oh, Thank you. Okay, so that was everything that we sent in the website. The current property, the price of the, of the property, the alternative property and the base requirement. This can be very flexible and work for every listing in the marketplace. So as you see, we use a lot of variables here. As we said, that was the thing that dynamic assistant. We override these variables and that's how we can control all the context of our assistant without having to be fetching assistant in real time with tools. I, this is a more efficient way to do it because the assistant has the whole initial context from the start. Don't worry for the prompt and everything. I will leave it in the description below. So as you can see, the React website is just sending an HTTP request that, that we can listen in our N8N webhook or in our Node.js API. In this video, we will cover both. First of all, I will show you an N8N flow to handle this scenario. And also, I will show you how to do it in Node.js. That's the way I have it running myself. So in the webhook, we're having all the information that we had in the website, the prerequisites, the Papi assistant ID, the data of the customer, the current property, the alternative property, the base, everything this comes in the webhook. First, we qualify the condition to check if they are Italian in this case. And if we do, in this case, the user is the real estate agency. So we are grabbing the real estate agency that posted this property and grabbing their, their Papi API key. Then we are constructing the body to call the Papi webhook to create a call with all the values that we grab from the website. Do the Papi call with the Papi private key that we grab from the real estate agency. And then just respond to the webhook that everything went great and the call was created successfully. Always you can add more error handling here, but this is a basic way that you can use as a boilerplate. If we go to the Node.js API, mm -hmm. We see a solution where we are receiving the webhook here. We are doing some security checks with a, a proxy client ID to check that it's actually the website, the one that is actually initiating the calls. But we won't cover that in this video. We are just going to go to the create call controller where we do exactly the same. We check if the prerequisite is okay. If it is, we grab the real estate agency posted the listing and grab their API key decrypted because every API key must be stored encrypted and never in plain text constructing the body with the phone that the customer provide just creating the call with, with the BAPI endpoint with the body of the website and the private key of the real estate agency also we provide a dashboard to, work to see how your agents are performing in this scenario we see a recent call from the real estate qualifier. We can see a summary of the call from we can hear the recording. Also the cost breakdown. And with this, we deliver a complete deliverable of a complete AI voice solution. Perfect. 
So first of all, we have to understand the difference between persistent assistance and dynamic assistance. Basically, the per persistent assistance is just the plain VAP assistant that you created in the system prompt. It doesn't have initial contact of the user, so they can say like, okay, this is Kale calling, is this Thomas? No, they cannot do that because they don't have initial context. They need to gather information within the call. This means that the assistant will take a few seconds to make the HTTP request and they have to ask questions like their email and this is going to be very error prone. We know that speech to text and text to speech model grabbing emails, they are not at their best yet. So persistent assistance has a problem with that. So which use cases we would use a persistent assistant? We are not going to be adding any extra properties on top of what we have configured in their dashboard and the system will perform statically. Maybe you can use some tools to customize it, but it's a much rigid assistant. The difference with a dynamic assistant is that we always have an initial context of the customer. In these cases, dynamic assistant can be much more flexible and have more context of the call that they are making. In an outbound example, Instead of just creating a call with our assistant ID, we would first query our DB, gather more information about a customer, and override the system prompt with custom variables. We can make the assistant mention their first name in the first message. So for example, something like, hey, this is Thomas, and that would reduce drastically the hangup rate. It doesn't need Puppy tools to actually gather information from our API. Of course, that we are going to need tools to perform actions, but we could already provide the assistant with the initial context required. Use cases for this, if you need a robust agent that adapts quickly to each call, it's probably a good idea to start using dynamic assistants. Because using them, we have ownership of the context that the assistant has in their system prompt, overriding key variables. For example, the name of the customer. So how all this works? It's very simple. Instead of just creating an outbound call with assistant ID to the BAPI endpoint, we would just some add extra properties in the JSON of the post request. Here we have assistant overrides and variable values. So here we are overriding the variable name with the name John. It's very simple. We just add a couple of extra properties to the JSON body. If we see here, we have variable values and within it, we have name John. That's how we override the customer name. This is a snapshot of the concepts of this kind of assistance. Those are all the steps that you need to make to have something like this running. Thanks a lot for watching the video and please let me know if you want to implement this and you are having any trouble, please drop it in the comments that we're going to stay tuned and check them out. See you in the next one.